Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. It is a joy to be here this morning. The last time I stood behind this pulpit was on the first Wednesday of the pandemic when there was no one but three people in the building. And everybody knows that when I speak, I like to say jokes, but it's not fun when no one's sitting in the crowd to laugh at your jokes. You're trying to convince yourself that people are laughing online did, did not work. But I'm just thankful to be back in God's house today. The pandemic has kept us out of the church, but God has still been good. He has still been a blessing, God. He still answered our prayers. He still met all of our needs. And I want to come here this morning to say that God is still in control. I say God is still in control. He's still in control. He's still worthy of our praise. In spite of what I'm going through, in spite of what we're seeing in this world, God is still in control of everything. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I want to come today just to speak very quickly. I know my, I have a short amount of time because we have other, our other services that are going to be taking place, but God just laid a word on my heart, and I just want to bring it to you this morning. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 of through 14, and then we'll go to Matthew chapter 7, dropping down to 21, 23. I do want to apologize. I know the media has been doing some upgrades, and they're probably going to put up King James Version, but I'll be reading from the NLT. If it's different from what they have up there, it's not their fault, it's my fault. Amen. So, reading very quickly in verse 13, it says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and the gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Dropping down to verse 21, it says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Lord Jesus, I thank you, almighty God, for once again to have this opportunity to speak to this wonderful church family, Lord Jesus. I pray, almighty God, that you will minister to us this morning, Lord Jesus. In your wonderful name we pray, amen. And the title simply for this message is, Remember, He is Still Coming Soon. There is still a heaven, and there is still a hell. Before I get started, I do want to say I thank my pastor and first lady for their amazing leadership in giving even us ministers this time to speak to our wonderful church family. And I'm thankful for the direction that we're headed in. It may seem a little murky right now, but God is, still has us in a direction. But the one thing that I hear the Lord saying and he's saying so plainly that in the midst of everything that's going on in this world, I need my church to remember that I am still coming soon. We look at the news. I turn on the news and I look at the news and 
I try to keep my mind balanced. I look at one station and I look at another one and I find myself getting angry and upset. I find myself dwelling and thinking about the things that are going on in this world. But the Lord continues to speak to me and saying, reminding me that I am coming back soon. And the thing that I don't need for my church to be caught up in these things. He reminded me that I needed to be the light of this world still. Because we are the only thing this world has to know that there is still a God and that he is still in control. That if we're being too pulled to and fro, if we're being pulled to a side and championing one side and downing the other side and never talking about God, God just reminded me, remember, I am the one that's going to change their way of thinking. I am the one that can set them free. I am the one that can deliver them from this world of sin. So don't give them... We can't bring uh, the world's way of thinking uh, into God's church. We can't handle problems the way that the world would handle problems. We got to ha handle them the way that God would handle those problems. The Lord asked me this question. He said, if someone, he said, think about it. He said, if you ran into a situation with a cop and something went wrong with you, would you uh, be willing to reach that soul if I asked you to? Can you think about it for a minute? Think about even if it's not the police, they're not the problem. Sin is the problem. But think about the person that you have an issue or situation with. If God's saying, I'm using this situation uh, to reach that soul, would you look past all the things that you're going through right then and there with that person and get on your knees and pray, God, help me to reach that soul? Or will the anger be so much built up inside of you that you can't even look past the hate and the pain and the anger. You see, God is looking at the soul of the man. Think about where you were before you walked into God's house. Before you were baptized in Jesus' name and filled this Holy Ghost, think about where you were. And imagine if God said there's no hope for that one, let's move on to the next. So I realize that my thinking needs to be uh, the way that God thinks about uh, that lost soul. It may be hard. They, they may not even ever come to the point to where they're going to make it, but God is saying, I need my church to love uh, the way that I love. I need my church to... I hope someone is hearing me this morning. Don't allow the enemy... Uh, to push all of the doubt, to push all of the hate, to push all of the negativity through your minds. You've got to get, we've got to be at the place as a church to where through all the things, all the distractions that are going on, that we can still hear the voice of the Lord. And when we get to that place where we're not hearing the voice of the Lord so clearly, that, that's try, the Lord trying to tell us that maybe we're not praying enough. Because if I'm praying, God is going to always speak to me. God is always going to nudge me and saying that you're not going the right direction. You're not thinking the way that I want you to think. If we pray, God will speak. And if he's not answering us, stay on the course, stay on the path. He's trying to show us something. But I realize 
in our Bible, it talks about heaven. But it's saying to get there is going to be, the path is going to be narrow. The Bible tells us that the path to hell is going to be broad. But if you look at it today, the enemy has convinced us this world, and he is even convincing the church that it is the opposite. He's trying to convince us that the pathway to get into heaven is broad, that you can do anything, say anything, be involved in anything, and you'll still make it to heaven. And he's trying to convince us that, I think that he's trying to convince us that hell doesn't even exist. That as long as you think you are a good person, as long as you believe you are a good person, as long as you acknowledge a God or a, a being, a heavenly being, that you're going to be okay. But we've got to remember as the church that the enemy knows where he is headed. And his goal is to make sure that we don't make it to heaven. So he's going to create this thing and build this thing to make us think that uh, any way we live, any way we act, uh, we're still going to be all right as long as we acknowledge God, as long as we say that we love God, uh, or as long as we say we are religious, or as long as we think uh, we're okay, we'll be okay. The one question I hear in my head uh, is the Lord saying, are you awake? Are you spiritually awake? Can you hear my calling? Or is it being blocked out by all the noise and confusion? The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, verse 10, so plainly, and we, I know we've heard it a lot lately, but we got to keep reminding ourselves of this that it says many will turn away from me uh, and betray and hate each other and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people sin will be rapid everywhere and the love of many will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be saved we can see that sin is running rapid everywhere we can see that the love of many is growing cold, colder each and every day. But God is saying, where is my church? Where is my church in these last days? Are you standing up for the things of God, or are you stepping back in, in fear of what people may say or what they may think about you? But God is calling on us to stand up as a church uh, and saying, in spite of what's going on, I'm going uh, to preach the truth. Uh, I'm going to let my light shine because uh, he is still coming back soon. Uh, and there's still lost souls uh, walking all over this place, and they're lost, uh, and they're dying in this world. You can talk to individuals, and you can speak plain and common sense to them and they'll say yes I know but still and they'll still continue to believe what the media and the news is saying the Bible says many will be deceived but it should never be stated that God's church in the last days uh, should be deceived we shouldn't be caught up in uh, all the things uh, in this world. Uh, we shouldn't be caught up in all the false news that is coming across. Some may be true, but a lot of it is fake news. We don't like, some don't like that saying, but uh, if you get on your knees and pray and God, let God speak to you, you'll realize that a lot of the things that are coming across uh, is simply to uh, deceive you. Deceive you so much that even uh, when you're man of God, your pastor is speaking the truth, uh, we'll begin to look past what our man of God is saying. Uh, we'll begin to look past the, the direction that he is trying to give uh, to the church. He preaches wisdom, 
He teaches us to have wisdom. You may think that he's being overly cautious, but uh, he is worried about your soul. He's worried about our flesh, and he is worried about our souls. And I know my man of God prays. I know that when I call him up, this microphone's trying to give me problems, but we're going to move on quickly. Amen. I know when I call my man of God up and I ask him for advice or I ask him to pray for me, I know that he is going to do it. So when, no, when there are times that uh, he may have to make a decision, I don't question his decisions. There may be things that I, at that point in time, that I may not understand or may not agree with, but I never question uh, what he's saying. I know that, well, if I don't agree with it, well, I guess what? I need to get on the same page with my man of God because if he's saying it, I know that he's praying about it. I know that he is speaking to God about it. And I know that he's going to help me get to heaven. I know my man of God, and I know the God that I serve. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, it says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is something that the enemy has convinced us in the church. And he's done it out there in the world. We see it every day. But even so, as it comes into the church, and I'm not just necessarily talking about here at TIC, but the thing called forgiveness is sometimes hard for us to do. We can think of all the things that people that person may have done to us. We can think about the things that they may have done, but we can't get past it. We can tell one another that, well, I, I forgive that person. I, I'm done with it. I, I've moved on. But we know deep down inside it's still there festering. We haven't truly forgiven them. I can tell you that in this time of quarantine, I've seen our dog test my wife many times in this time of quarantine. And she'll get after the dog and she'll call the dog and say, you're bad dog, bad dog. But then five seconds later, she'll be hugging the dog, saying, oh, you're the best, you're the greatest dog, you're such a good dog. And I'm like, is that the same dog you just talked about five minutes ago? Just thought, that thought just popped in my head. Because one minute she can be upset with the dog, but she doesn't hold it against the dog. But think about it when a brother or a sister or someone else that we look at the problem or the situation as a big ordeal, but God is saying that's not a big ordeal. I've forgiven much more than what you need to forgive right there. Where my wife, the next five minutes later, she was loving the dog, saying it's the greatest dog in the world. You're such a great dog. But I look at my brother or my sister or the person that I work with or God is saying, I want to use you to reach them. But we look at them and say, uh, what you did, uh, you can never overcome that situation. But God is saying, remember, you need to forgive that person for what they've done. You need to forgive them of the mistakes that they made uh, because if you don't forgive, I will not forgive you. 
think about that. He's coming soon. What things are we holding on to here as God is wrapping up things? Am I wondering why my prayers are being hindered or why things are, God is not answering my prayers? And if we'll hear the voice of God, is he telling us it's time for us uh, to clean things up? It's time for us uh, to let go of the way the world thinks and the way the world acts. Uh, and it's time for us to make things right because I am coming soon. You may be looking at the big things that you may think will get you, uh, make you miss heaven, but God is showing you some things that you're overlooking. He's showing me some things that I may be overlooking and saying, you need to get things seen right uh, because I'm coming soon. <laughs> heaven is my goal, but it's not just my goal for me to make it, but it's my goal, my goal for my family to make it. It's my goal for everyone God is telling me to reach uh, to make it. Uh, there's no one uh, that I dislike uh, so much that I want to see them living in, in hell for eternity. I need to look at them and say, what could God do if he got a hold of their lives? What could God do uh, if I looked at my brother sitting next to me? Uh, what could a revival be if I would say, you know what, my brother, we're going to look past uh, our situations, uh, and together we're going to come together and be unified uh, in these last days so that we can push past all the things that are going on uh, so that we can reach uh, this lost uh, and dying world. And Peter, and I'm coming to an end as Brother Ryan comes, 1 Peter chapter 4, starting at verse 7, it says, The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciples in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. The end of this world is coming soon. God makes it a point to show us every day that he is coming soon and he is saying, get ready. How many of you can hear his voice calling? every morning when you lift your head. And he's saying when we turn on the news, when we read the news, that it should not draw us in to where we're picking sides, but it should be another reminder that our time is ticking away. speaking to the church today that we've got to be at that place to where we can hear his voice. Over all the noise and all the distractions, hear his voice. When you feel the anger rising up, I challenge you to get back down on your knees and pray because I guarantee you when you pray uh, that when you get back up, your mind, you'll be thinking a new way. When I wake up in the morning, I want to wake up with joy. We ought to wake up with joy because we have been filled with this Holy Spirit We've been baptized in his name, and if we're truly living for him, we're going to hear his voice on that great day. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. But I want to hear other people talking about how good God has been to them, about how God has changed their lives. 
if you hear the negativity and they're looking for how can we change, introduce them to Jesus. If you want to see victory, if you want to see God move in this world, uh, tell, tell them about the man called Jesus. When we get into problems and situations, we know all we got to do is say, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's victory uh, in the name of Jesus. And I'm opening up for the altar cause. We know where you are is the altar. You can stand, you can kneel, you can pray with the person, their family sitting next to you. But let's just call on the Lord here this morning, letting him speak to you. I'm sure he's speaking in different ways to us. But nevertheless, he's calling us and he's telling us, I'm coming soon and I need my church to be ready. Not consumed, but ready. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right now, let's call on him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.